Good morning, Painter Nation. Tony here from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com, and we're gonna cover two questions subscribers sent in. The first one is from Cecil Holt, uh, and he says, I would like to know how to stop chemical pop. Every time I lay my clear coat, I get little holes in my paint. I lay it and I lay it heavy. I'm using a Iwata 400 with a 1.3 tip and 15 minutes between coats. Can you help me with that? So let's let's separate the difference between chemical pop and fisheye. A lot of people get those two chemical reactions uh, mistaken. So let's go here. I have a, a few pictures that I want to show you. Okay, so here is solvent pop. This is what solvent pop looks like and I'm going to get into the details of why we get solvent pop and why we get fisheye. So if we look closely here, the solvent pop is more of a bubble in your base coat. Okay, could be clear coat as well. Uh, coming through to the surface and it looks like this. You know, it's it, it could be all over your paint or certain sections. Okay, it depends. Um, but this is kind of the best images that I can find. And we also have uh, a blog post. So this is solvent pop, guys. Now I want to show you what fisheye looks like. Fisheye looks similar if you look at it, but it's actually more of a crater. The bubbles are inward. It's more of a crater, like I said. So this guy actually um, cut and buffed out so, uh, fisheye. And you can see that the compound is still filled up in the fish eye. Okay, so this white stuff here is compound or wax, whatever he used uh, to go over it. Okay, here's another uh, view of some fish eye here. Okay, it's more of a crater style chemical reaction where the paint separates and is not sticking. Okay, here's some solvent pop uh, images, not solvent pop. Uh, this actually looks like fish eye to me. This is more fish eye paint. So let's go to uh, my blog post here. So I have a blog post. If you're watching this video, click the link below in the description. It'll take you to this post here at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Um, it looks like for some reason the images disappeared on my website. So I have to make sure my developer updates that for me and I will have the updated version for you soon. Uh, but if we click here, top 10 common paint problems, we can click on fisheye here. I'm gonna quickly read to you all right, what I had wrote down here a while back. Okay, so fisheye. Condition, tiny surface uh, finished blemishes that resemble small circles of popped paint bubbles, which seem to occur almost as soon as the paint hits the body surface. Causes of improper surface, causes improper surface cleaning or preparation. Many waxes and polishes contain silicone, the most common cause of fisheye. Small traces of silicone do not allow paint to settle evenly. Rather, they cause the material to encircle the speck of silicone uh, or dirt or wax and form a fisheye. So if you have a piece of contamination or dirt or uh, silicone or, you know, some mist of oil or something on your paint surface, when you lay the paint, paint's going to stick everywhere. It's going to get into that area. It's going to cause a fisheye in a crater where it doesn't stick in that area. That's what causes uh, fisheye. Um, silicone adheres firmly to the paint film and requires extra effort for its re removal. Even small quantities in sanding dust, rags from cars being polished nearby can cause this failure. Check for possible contamination in paint materials as well. Check for painter contamination, skin, oils before you touch the car. Your oils can cause the same reaction. Perspiration, greasy foods. Maybe you're having lunch near your project, some, some fried chicken or fries or whatever. That, you know, contamination can get on the car if you're not careful. Check for proper cleaning procedures pr uh, prior to refinishing. Check airborne contamination in the spray area. Effects of the old finish or previous repair. So if you had an old paint job that you're sanding over that you properly, that you didn't clean properly before sanding, that can cause the issue as well. That's why I say when starting any paint job, you wanna wash and clean what you're about to work on uh, with a good dish soap detergent before you do your body work. 
Um, so let's get into the prevention. Prevention should be taken to remove all traces of silicone by thoroughly cleaning with wax and grease remover. And this is why I always recommend use your wax and grease remover, guys. Okay, it's it's cheap insurance at the last minute to make sure your surface is clean so you don't end up with these issues because this stuff costs more money and time because you got to spend more time to redo the job um, and more money for paint materials okay you can also use fisheye eliminator i really don't recommend this uh, unless you're you're in the middle of a job and you've got to get it done and you just have an issue and you want to try to eliminate it as soon as you see it add some fisheye eliminator a couple of squirts in your paint could help you out. My dad's done that many times. I've used it a few times in the past and it works. Okay, it's called Fisheye Eliminator. It comes in a little four ounce bottle. You squeeze it in your paint, mix it up, and then just continue spraying. It could possibly fix it. Okay, um, drain and clean your air pressure regulator daily to remove trapped moisture and dirt. Um, air compressor tank, uh, let's see. So that's pretty much it for Fisheye, okay? Uh, let's go back to the question here. Um, now let's cover solvent pop. Okay, like I said, solvent pop is more of a popping issue. Let's go to the blog post here, and let me go up here and click on solvent pop, and I'll kind of go over that really quickly with you. So solvent popping. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and use this little cool tool here. Uh, this thing here is solvent popping, okay? Conditions, blister on the paint surface caused by trapped solvents in the top coats or primer, okay? So basically not giving your paint enough flash time. So if you're laying your first coat of base coat, you don't let it flash long enough. Flash is basically letting it cure and dry ready for your second coat, okay? And then you rush your second coat on, you're trapping some solvents in there from releasing into the air. And this usually happens uh, with base coat and your and clear coat. So say you spray your two, three coats of base coat and then you rush your clear coat on it, you're trapping, okay? The clear coat is trapping your base coat from properly drying and airing out, okay? Because it needs the solvent. The reducers that you mix your base coat with either slow, medium, or fast, needs to evaporate into the atmosphere to dry, to cure, okay? That's how base coat dries. And then you go ahead and put your clear coat on it. So if you're rushing that process, that flash time process, you could end up with solvent popping, okay? Um, check imperfections on a whole. So basically, check to see if you're having an issue on one panel or all the panels. Okay, check colors if you're doing two-tone paint jobs. Maybe you have it on the silver only and not on the black or vice versa. Okay, um, check your thinners and reducers. You might be using, you know, too much of a slow reducer or too much of a fast reducer. Okay, sometimes um, the use of fast or dry reducer, sorry, use of fast dry thinner or reducer, especially when the material is sprayed too dry at excessive pressure, can cause solvent popping by trapping air in the film. So another thing you could be doing is trapping air between your coats, between your film, okay? So it's also improper reducers, okay, that trap the air in there. Uh, excessive film thickness, like I said, will also cause the issue. Insufficient drying time between coats, okay? Uh, right over here. <clears throat> uh, so again, check for excessive film buildup, check for high fluid delivery, too much fluid, check for too much overlapping, maybe you're just overlapping it too much, check for proper flash and purge time. Alternative, check for a high temperature uh, and check for low air pressure. So uh, prevention, let's go ahead and move up here. Clean your areas before you paint. Select the proper reducer and thinner, okay, for your painting condition. So if it's a little chilly out, you may want to use a medium, okay. Uh, if it's normal temperatures between 75 and 85, a medium is good. If it's more than 85 degrees, you want to use a slow reducer, slow activator to give your paint a chance to flow out uh, and dry because you don't want it drying too fast, okay. So, guys, I'm going to leave a quick link to uh, this article below the video here. And I was actually going to get into another uh, Q&A question, but let's just keep this to one. 
Um, I hope this helps. All you gotta do to get a free book is go to learnautobodyandpaint.com. Click the link over here if you're on a mobile device, down below if you're on a desktop, it really doesn't matter. And fill out this form here, put the best email in so I know where to send your free 85 page booklet. Be sure to check the blog here at Learn Auto Body. There's a ton of information here that'll help you, like all of our VIP members around the world, learn how to properly do auto body from your own home garage, open up a, your own automotive shop if you want to, and take things to the next level. If you want to check out VIP as well, check out the VIP course. There's tons of materials in there uh, where you can learn so much more about auto body. Please like the video, share, comment down below, and I'll be helping more people through these Q and A's here. There was another question that I want to answer, uh, but I'll make another video because this one's getting a little long. We covered in depth uh, about solvent pop, which is popping, more bubblish, and then fisheye, which is more of a crater style of paint reaction here, uh, caused by pretty much contaminated surfaces, okay? Oil, wax, silicone on your paint surfaces where your paint does not stick. All right, guys, it's Tony here. Hope you liked the video. Comment, learn more. Hit up learnautobodyandpaint.com. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.